Hello guys, welcome back to Supersonic Flyer, a single platform for all details about AME. And also welcome to this video of 8.3 Theory of Flight of Module 8. If you haven't watched our previous video of Module 8.2 Part 2 then click on the i icon to see a detailed video. So subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon, so that you never miss an update. Let's get started with our topic without wasting time. We will discuss about Submodule 8.3 that is Theory of Flight Part 1. So our first topic is relationship between lift, weight, thrust, and drag. Second topic is glide ratio. Third topic is polar curve. Fourth topic is aerodynamic forces and turns. Fifth topic is stalls. Watch it till the end to understand it better, and ask your doubts in comments section. First we will go through a relationship between lift, weight, thrust, and drag. Weight has a definite relationship to lift. This relationship is simple, but important in understanding the aerodynamics of flying. Lift is the upward force on the wing acting perpendicular to the relative wind. Lift acts vertically, and contract the effect of weight gravity. It acts at right angle to the line of flight, and through the center of pressure of the wings. Line of flight means a route taken through the air. Weight gravity force acts downwards through the center of gravity of airplane. Thrust has a definite relationship with drag. These relationships are quite simple, but very important in understanding the aerodynamics of flying. Thrust arranged symmetrically to the center line. It acts parallel to the line of flight. Thrust is a aircraft propelling force. Drag must be overcome for the aircraft to move, and movement is essential to obtain lift. Drag opposes the forward movement. Drag is a backward deterrent force. An aircraft flying at constant height and speed. Lift equals to weight. Thrust equals to drag. Under these conditions, angle of attack altered to adjust the production of lift exactly equals the weight which it must support. Engine thrust set to exactly equal the aircraft drag generated at that particular speed. When the lift force is equal to the weight force, the aircraft is in a state of equilibrium and neither gains nor loses altitude. For example an airplane traveling at 200 knots has 4 times the lift as the same airplane traveling at 100 knots, if the angle of attack and other factors remain constant. Aircraft tends to rotate nose up, or nose down, if the force's line of action not correctly arranged. Proper arrangement of the forces depends on aircraft design. Center of pressure aft, of center of gravity is nose down couple. Thrust line below drag line, is a nose up couple. Coming to the next topic, glide ratio. The glide ratio of an aircraft is the distance of forward travel, divided by the altitude lost in that distance. Since it is the lift over drag, L slash D, ratio that determines the gliding range, weight will not affect it. The glide ratio is based only on the relationship of the aerodynamic forces acting on the aircraft. The glide ratio is affected by all four fundamental forces that act on an airplane, weight, lift, drag, and thrust. If all factors affecting the airplane are constant, the glide ratio will be constant. For an example, if an airplane travels 10,000 feet forward, while descending 1,000 feet, its glide ratio is said to be 10 to 1. Observe this figure to get clear understanding. The best speed for the glide is one at which, the airplane will travel the greatest forward distance, for a given loss of altitude in still air. Any change in the gliding airspeed will result in a proportionate change in glide ratio. When descending at a speed below the best glide speed, induced drag increases. When descending at a speed above best glide speed, parasite drag increases. Coming to the next topic, polar curve. A polar curve is a graph, which contrasts the sink rate of an aircraft with its horizontal speed. It is used, mainly to illustrate performance of a glider. The origin for a polar curve is where the airspeed is zero and the sink rate is zero. However, the best glide angle is the line with the least slope. See this figures to get clear idea. Coming to the next topic, aerodynamic forces and turns. A fundamental aircraft motion is a banking turn. This maneuver is used to change the aircraft heading. The turn is initiated by using the ailerons or spoilers to roll or bank the aircraft to one side. On the figure, the airliner is banked to the right by lowering the left aileron and raising the right aileron. We can break the lift vector into two components. One component is vertical and opposed to the weight which is always directed towards the center of the earth. The other component is an anopposed side force, which is in the direction of the roll, and perpendicular to the flight path. 
Here are some examples of roll, yaw, and pitch. As long as the aircraft is banked, the side force is a constant, unopposed force on the aircraft. The resulting motion of the center of gravity of the aircraft is a circular arc. When the wings are brought level by an opposing motion of the ailerons, the side force is eliminated, and the aircraft continues to fly in a straight line along a new heading. The rudder is used during the turn, to coordinate the turn, that is to keep the nose of the aircraft pointed along the flight path. If the rudder is not used, one can encounter an adverse yaw, in which the drag on the outer wing pulls the aircraft nose away from the flight path. Look at this pictures in which forces during normal coordinated turn at constant altitude. Normal, slipping and skidding turns at a constant at altitude. Coming to the next topic, stars. Stall is an undesirable phenomenon in which aircraft wings experience increased air resistance and decreased lift. It can cause an airplane to crash. Stall occurs when a plane is under too great an angle of attack. The angle of attack is the angle between the plane and the direction of flight. This angle is dependent upon the airfoil section or profile of the wing, its plan form, its aspect ratio, and other factors, but is typically in the range of 8 to 20 degrees relative to the incoming wind, relative wind for most subsonic airfoils. When it stalls, in a stall, the wing does not totally stop producing lift. Rather, it cannot generate adequate lift to sustain level flight. A stall can occur at any pitch altitude or airspeed. There are three flight situations in which the critical angle of attack can be exceeded low speed, high speed, and turning. If at any time, during a turn the angle of attack becomes excessive, the aircraft stalls. The stalling speed of a particular aircraft is not a fixed value for all flight situations, but a given aircraft race stall at the same angle of attack regardless of airspeed, weight, load factor, or density altitude. This is the stall strip on leading edge of Cirrus SR-22 wing. Stall strips are used to initiate flow separation at chosen locations on the wing during high angle of attack flight, so as to improve the controllability of the aircraft when it enters stall. They are typically employed in pairs, symmetrically on both wings. To balance the aircraft aerodynamically, the CL lift coefficient is normally located aft of the CG center of gravity. A stall may occur at a lower angle of attack than normal or at a higher speed. That's it for 8.3 part 1. Stay tuned for 8.3 part 2. If you find the video interesting and informative then please like the video, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe Supersonic Flyer.